Warren, it was a fantastic trip to Northern Ireland last week. Uh, first of all, tell us about why it was important to, to you personally, uh, for the players and for the football club. Well, first of all, it's always nice to get home. Um, at this time, it was in different reasons. You know, th- there's, there's some I had dinner with. Um, his name's Kenny Bruce. He was the owner of Lauren Football Club. Um, and I've known Kenny for a few years now, with Ian Dow involved. And he's a football man, Kenny. Um, what he's done with Lauren Football Club is phenomenal. So we introduced the, the boss here um, and we're looking to move forward, just not in, in England, but as I say, overseas. Um, and we took the players over to Lauren, you know, showed the setup, had a great connection with them. Um, and, you know, moving forward, it's, it's something that we want to do. You know, that there, Kenny's going to come over here. He's, he's based in England himself. But uh, we're looking to get a link between the two clubs um, and move forward together. I mean, that all comes down to your personal connections, I guess, isn't it? You mentioned Ian Dowie there, the owner of Lyon as well. Um, how important is it to have those connections to, to, to benefit um, a football club like Welling? For football's all about connections. You know, I've said this before with, with signing a player. You know, it's your, your contacts um, you need. And, you know, just knowing, obviously, growing up as a kid and breaking into the Northern Ireland setup, Ian Dowie was just you know, coming to the end of his, um, but Downer's involved with, with um, you know, Kenny at Lauren, but he's also got big links with Crystal Palace, and we're training right beside their local team to us, um, and obviously with Mark in there as well, and I've done my coaching badges with Patrick and Osh, so it's all in a circle, that, that's something that we want to try and try and mix together, um, and as I say, it's based on contacts of what we've got. And you, you talk about these contacts and, and reaching further afield. Obviously, we're a community club. We, we, we're very big on the local area, but stretching out to somewhere like Northern Ireland is great. But also, I know there's some opportunities uh, in the United States of America as well. We've had some lads come over from there and, and, and train with us this season. And there's, there's a bigger opportunity there as well. Can you tell us a little bit about what's going on with yeah, that? Yeah, definitely. Look, as I touched on, you know, I think football clubs, you can't sit still. We want to move forward. And as I said, not just in the UK. Um, but you know we've went over to America um, a company called the Sock Universities who I brought to Bulgaria um, and what they do is an education program for you know boys who do online online um, work but also have a dream of being a footballer and some very very fantastic and wealth, wealthy young boys athletes and I must admit very well, well behaved so what we're looking at, it's, it's five to six times the income of what we would have in our, um, you know, academy. So we've had four of the players over already. I brought them to Bulgaria with me um, and they're coming over next week. And hopefully, hopefully they want to have a game with us, um, which I think is going to work out. And, you know, you don't want to touch wood, but if all's good, we'll have a game here on, on the stadium. But it's another connection of mine um, and Matt Driver that we want to push this. This club forward got the full backings with, with the boss. Um, you know this club, it's been probably difficult the last few years, and and you know we've said that. Look, it's not, not built. You know Rome, as I said, quite quickly, but we want to move forward together, and that's why we're expanding to try and do things. And I'm not saying we're going to wave a magic wand. This is going to happen, but looking at it, you know we'd like to, to be at the forefront of things for for the panorama. And that's why we'd like to expand, um, not just in the UK, but also on the other side of uh, the world. Well, that's it, isn't it? I mean, when people might look at it and they'll see these, you know, uni- uh, well, the soccer university in America, academy football football companies in America, Northern Ireland as well, linking up with teams like that. Why, why Welling for them? Is it, is it, it comes to that connection again of all, the, all the, the clubs they could connect with. Why is it such an attractive prospect for them to team up with us? Yeah, listen, it's a good question. Um, you know, they come over to Bulgaria and they were very, very well behaved. Great kids, some very good players, which it gives us obviously first refusal on those boys as well. But the big pulling part is people want to be in London. You know, they have a base in Portugal, they have a base in Spain, um, which we are potentially looking at going out for pre-season trips out there and having a big link with them. Um, but you know they, they, they want a chance they want to they want to come to London London where we are we're 10 minutes from central London you're in the flight path of three airports here it's it's fantastic as what I said you know they, they just want to play the football look they're from great families from all backgrounds um, some as far as Mexico as well but uh, 
Yeah, the big thing is the dream that we've we've sold them. Um, what Matt, I've worked with Matt before, myself, um, and these projects, and and he liked what he's seen, and obviously we get the the boys over here. It's great for us, but also if they've got a chance of of promoting themselves around the. Uh, some of the bigger clubs and it benefits all parties. Let's talk about that that trip now to Northern Ireland last week, uh, more specifically, um, not just from a commercial point of view and, and, and growing the club, but um, for the players and, and the squad, it seemed like a really worthwhile trip off the back of a good result at Chelmsford uh, and then getting the lads in good spirit, which showed, you know, with a really good performance against Dartford. Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, it's important. Look, I've been in, in clubs myself where you, you get away at the, the um, around the January time and it's a long season and, you know, uh, what we had the possibility two months before to do it, as I say, we've been speaking to, to Lauren and Kenny for a while. Um, and as I say, I've known them and, and the two bosses connected straight away with a lovely, lovely bit of lunch, um, you know, up London and that were connected straight away. And, uh, you know, it was great for the players to get over there. They, and I mean, they absolutely loved it. You know, we played them, we've seen the facilities of what they've got. And it's really a league pushing forward. For me, probably... With the teams in it now, about five or six have gone full time. It's taken over the, the league down in Republic of Ireland. Um, Lawrence an up and coming team. You know, he, he's. I remember they had thirty people. They're getting two and a half thousand through the, through the gates now. Um, they've their own academy the whole way down from sixteen the whole way up to the first team. So it, it's a real professional club. And it's great that we, uh, we we can be a part of this. It's fair to say, Lan a, a sort of club where we can learn from, and, and there's a blueprint there for, for us to follow suit so in growing as a club, but it also, I guess, surpassing in a way as yeah, well. Yeah, look, football's all about trust. Um, and if you trust some people, you work together, it's a winner at the end for everyone, and that's the way we want to go. But also, it gives us a chance for players, also with Lan for players, and we have said that. I think it was Kenny had said that South East London's the biggest. Um, area for footballers and the whole of I think it was the UK so, and, and you just looked it's you know we've got we've got you know multicultural from from all religions all all backgrounds and as I say it's a great place for people to be in, and it's great that Kenny wants to take that on board um, if we can be a part of that and help them then it's uh, it suits both parties so the lads got a, a good bit of training in there and there was a, a match as well um, which I know was a defeat but again not doesn't really reflect on, on much does it but um, good to get a game out there and, and play against a different opposition yeah 100% no but we'll look we had a training session the whole point was the boys to go over see it see the different the, the standards and listen to some good players Lauren and players who come from England over there um, but the whole point was to get the boys together change the scenery we've got used their facilities um, play the game but it was the friendship and uh, you know the bond that we can do, and as I say, it gives it gives the players, you know, something different to get them together for that few days and and touch wood. It's uh, before it was a great result, probably disappointed come the the Dartford game on a Saturday because we played so well. But you know, uh, listen, it's been a trip worthwhile. And um, when you talk about that togetherness, and obviously you had a, a good playing career, so you know all about dressing rooms and, and how important togetherness can be. How important is that for you here as a manager to to sort of replicate the, the sort of good dressing rooms that you've had to to get the characters together, not just good players, but mm-hmm. good characters in in the right place together and and being a unit and and you know playing for each other out there. No, it's very important. I think you need to. You know, it's all based around team spirit. Uh, for me, obviously, quality comes in, but if you've got a team. That, that know they're going to stand side by side with each other. Um, you've got half a chance, and at the end of the day, I'm the leader of that there, and there was an incident on coming back from Belfast that, you know, for some reason, and my players were well-behaved. Um, one of the, the the baggage people who, at Swissport, EasyJet wouldn't let us on the plane. Um, one of my players, I was already sat down, but I, I couldn't leave him. That player was Manny Parry. And uh, I got off the plane myself and I went and stood with him because, look, I'm the leader of this. You know, and as it goes down, if the ship sinks, the captain stands there first. And that's the togetherness I want. And I wasn't doing it to make it look as if, uh, for the players, to, I done it because that's my rule. Um, I'm an honest boy. And I stood with him and lucky me and him got home uh, that night, but I wasn't going to leave him in Belfast in his own. <laughs> but uh, no, as I said, they loved it. But that's that's the togetherness. They want to see, you know, me leading by example, and I want to lead them because I've been a player myself, and that's the togetherness we wanted this football club. 
And I guess from a personal point of view, you said it's somewhere that means a lot to you, going out to Belfast. And I believe you, you took a trip to a mural where, where you star on a nice big picture of yourself there. That must have been a bit of a shock for some of the lads to see. <laughs> yeah, listen, there's a couple of good players on the wall. Um, but there's two of me over there. There's one on each side of Belfast, just when I played, you know, I think. Fans appreciated the way I was, the warm my heart in my sleeve. I grew up in East Belfast and uh yeah, they've put the mirror, but believe me, I've aged since then. Um uh, but it's always nice to uh to go home because I take the dog sometimes, I walk down there and um you know, as my wee lad who's who's coming up now in football, I obviously can see it, but it's always nice uh to see that, you know, appreciation of yourself.